Welcome to this episode of Sunny Silver Linings. Sunny's guest is Jack Daly. Jack is an international expert in sales, executive, and entrepreneurial positions with over 30 years of experience. He's also a professional keynote speaker, a business coach, and a best-selling author. He's widely considered to be one of the best professional sales trainers in America. Jack always has a vision and a plan of action to achieve his goals. He lives his life in the same way, a life by design. And now, your host, the founder and CEO of IT by Design, Mr. Sonny Kayla. Over to you, Sonny. Well, Jack, thank you so much for joining my podcast today. I truly, truly appreciate your partnership. And you have so much, so much experience, so much thought leadership that you do in the area of sales and leadership. And thank you so much for joining me today. You know what, Sonny, it's a privilege. And, you know, I've, I've worked with so many MSPs around the United States and, in fact, around the globe that to make a difference today is a, is a great opportunity for me. So thanks for having me. Thank you. And the biggest struggle, Jack, that my MSP friends, my peers that they're facing and something that I faced as a MSP entrepreneur is building my revenue engine, building my revenue team. Uh, from process, systems, and people perspective. And that is the biggest struggle that I see with my peers. And I'm so excited about having that conversation with you because you are the expert and you are the expert of the experts when it comes to building revenue engines. So what is your recommendation for my MSP friends to build that engine? Well, Sonny, I say this to general audiences and that I would tell you on a narrow basis to MSPs, uh, the same applies. And that is in most businesses, if you want to grow your sales, grow your sales force in quantity and quality. Um, I am a terrific salesperson. I, I know that's egotistical for me to say, but I've been at it a long, long time. But here's the problem. It's right here, it's time. You see, there's only so many calls I can make. There's only so many calls I can take. There's only so many orders I can write. But if I were to hire one or two or three salespeople and teach them what I know about selling, eventually, collectively, they'll outdo me. And so the key to fast growing companies at the profitable fast growing company is to grow your sales force in quantity and in quality. And that's really the key. Um, and underscore that with proven systems and processes. What we don't want is we don't want to hire a bunch of people and have them each making it up as they go along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's, yeah. So when I look at, like, and reflect on our journey, ITPD journey, and we experienced that majority of MSP owners are experiencing right now. There are two types of uh, MSPs now, Jack, like bigger picture, is that there's a lot of consolidation happening uh, with m and and the, that these MSPs are becoming platforms and they kind of combine two three, rep, uh, two, three MSPs of two, three million become 10 million. And those are the MSPs where they are a little bit more mature in terms of having a couple of salespeople. And then there's another set of MSPs where they are owner led and majority of the owners have the technical background and the technical background gives them that ability to be those strategic trusted advisors for small businesses for their IT. But uh, these owners don't have that background of sales, business development, or leadership in general, how you build teams. And when I look at my journey, I started as a computer engineer as well. And then New York City 2003, when I started, I was the salesperson and I had my brochure with up, going up and down in New York City buildings to going to the office managers and receptionists to call me if they need any kind of uh, computer support. And it took us years and years to at least have like one or two successful salespeople. And there, it was kind of a revolving door. You hire, hire a salesperson, pay that person six months, and then that person doesn't work out. You think it's the salesperson, but eventually over years, what I have learned was it was me who was not really knowing or who did not have that experience and knowledge 
to build my revenue team. So mm-hmm. experiencing that journey and now talking to other MSP, our clients now as master MSP, we serve a lot of MSPs in the US and across the world. And I do see that they are struggling with the same thing that I struggled. And when I talk to you, and you talk about the playbook, you talk about the hiring processes. Can you tell us like, you know, where one will have, one will start where they are not being successful at building a, an effective sales team? Well, the first thing that I can tell you, Sonny, is, is that making the leap over the chasm of doing it yourself from, a, from an MSP owner and you being the sales representative, making that leap into, hey, entrusting the sales to another individual or other individuals is a big leap. But it's a leap that's necessary, and I don't mean to be insulting to anybody uh, that's listening here, but it's the difference between having a hobby and having a business that's going to grow. You know, my background is uh, I had started six businesses from scratch, and they all grew immensely quickly. Uh, my largest sale, sales force was 2,600 salespeople, but we started with one salesperson, right? And so I write this book about six years ago called Hyper Sales Growth. And it really stressed how to really grow. And and it did the job, which was make the phone ring, lead development. And each time that I took a call, uh, the person said, gosh, I want to grow like this. And I said, well, uh, if you want to grow like that, hyper, like significant, more than double digit, triple digit, quadruple digit on an annual basis, um, you need to do it differently than you're doing it today. So do this for me. Send me your sales playbook. Send me how you sell today, and then I can build the next layer up. 98 out of 100 companies, no matter what industry they were in, 98 out of 100 companies couldn't, couldn't send me a sales playbook. Now, let's translate that back to MSPs. You see, if the if the owner of the company is the salesperson and doesn't have documented the processes of success that they've used in winning new accounts, well, if they hire somebody in, they don't have a template. They don't have a, they don't have a map in order to be successful. So they just start throwing things up against the wall and they're winging it. And so there's no there's no wonder in my mind as to why there's so much turnover by the MSPs with hiring people because they're putting them at the desk and saying we need to go get business. Are you a sales guy? Yeah, I'm a sales guy. Well, bang the phone and make so many dials. But we haven't taught them how to handle handle objections and we haven't told them how to open up the conversation. We haven't told them how to set the stage. We haven't told them them that the important thing is to first figure out what the needs of the person are, to to ask more questions as opposed to pitching. Um, And so there's an awful lot of things that we need to be prepared for in bringing new people on to represent us as sales. But let me add this one thing. You know, I'm not a technology guy. Uh, And so I barely function uh, sitting at my desk with a desktop and I'm always calling people for assistance. But I can tell you that I could represent an MSP and I'm not looking to do that, but I could represent them as a salesperson because I love to sell. I love to get through the gatekeeper. I love to find out what the needs are. I love finding out how to make the solution happen. And I don't need to talk the technical. I can bring you the engineer in. I can bring you the specialist in. So my passion is securing business. Now, if I try to take a tech person who loves being in that world and say, go knock on those doors and find business, that's the uncomfortable place for them to be. So a lot of MSPs, they'll win over a new account or a new couple accounts and then get sucked into servicing the account because that's where their comfort is. And what happens is we've got this jagged up and down, up and down. We won one, we won another one, we lost one, and we don't get momentum. You keep me as a salesperson in the sales role with systems and processes, and I will tell you the MSP's business should grow. So systems and processes that are repeatable and in a playbook form and systemizing that playbook uh, is key. Uh, Is that what you're recommending here? 
The, there's no question. Look, I'm going to take you back to the, you know, and this is way larger than our MSPs. But when I had 2,600 salespeople, I gave the same message everywhere I went in the company. There aren't 2,600 best ways to sell this stuff. Well, if I take it back to the MSV, um, you know, if you've got two salespeople, uh, yourself and one salesperson, we don't want two different ways out there. Figure out what works and make that your baseline. Make that the way that we do business. Mm -hmm. um, why should I pick your company over someone else's that I'm looking at? Well, you better have that answer. You need it needs to be unique. It needs to be differentiated. It has to stand out and with specificity. And so there are all of these ingredients in what I call a sales playbook that you can literally put together and you can actually practice it. And so um, uh, if I run into an account that says, I'm already happy with the person who does my IT, we should have a darn great response for that, not something that we're making up on the fly. And that's what we run into is making it up on the fly. So let's go back for just a moment and say, well, if you built the playbook, then what what what, what do I look for uh, in, in hiring a salesperson? And what I would tell you there is the number one attribute that you're looking for is grit, G-R-I-T. Never, ever give up that the person just is tenacious at getting into work and dialing and making it happen and looking for the win. That That's something that I've never been able to figure out how to teach. You can teach people systems and processes and product and service and all of those things. But the hunger, the, the drive, that's the thing that's that intangible. And that's the that's the piece that I look for when I'm when I'm recruiting for somebody to join me. Yeah, that was so powerful. Like when you said, create that playbook and practice it, because one of the struggle that I have gone through personally is, do you spend time on hiring the salesperson or you do you spend time on kind of fixing other pieces of your business as a small business when you're small and do you create a playbook first or you hire the person but one thing that I always struggle with that and I, I know some of our uh, MSP partners where they're part of our build at university they will talk with Sunny do you want me to spend time on documenting my playbooks or running my business. So I'm as a, as a small business owner, I'm wearing these multiple hats and which one to do first. But one thing, one thing that you just mentioned, which was so powerful is do take time to create that playbook and then use that playbook. Even if you don't have a salesperson, you are the salesperson, use that playbook to sell validate that uh, that process as, as as a salesperson you being the salesperson and then hire the salesperson now is a tested process that you is working out for you and you can teach your new salesperson and their success rate will go up because you're giving them something you're setting them up for success that was really powerful so thank you for that now listen 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 sonny the the the, the msps for the most part are entrepreneurs that started their own business. Um, they were a technician typically earlier in life and then decided, hey, I can open up my own store, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, the most impactful book, and it's a short book, the most impactful book for any entrepreneur is The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. Mm -hmm. It is the quintessential Bible. Mm -hmm. And basically, M Gerber's message is that we have this entrepreneurial moment that says, hey, instead of working for somebody, I ought to open up my own store. And mm -hmm. that's the entrepreneur. That's the e-myth. Yeah. Uh, but then they end up working at their company longer hours with less money and more worries mm -hmm. because they're in doing so many different hats. Mm -hmm. And so Gerber and I, Michael and I have met several times and it's like, gosh, you have to take the leap over the chasm and you've got to have some type of documented systems and processes. Now, when I talk about a playbook, I'm not talking about something that's yay thick. I'm not talking about some Bible. I'm talking about simple 
but very fundamental stuff that we do on a regular ongoing basis. That's what I'm talking about. And quite frankly, for an MSP, if you took a weekend, you could build your playbook. Yeah. So there's no excuse yeah. on why, why why you don't get it done. Yeah, and there are great resources uh, available out there. Uh, one of the book that I brought back when we met at YPO uh, was your playbook. Uh, your book on how to build a sales playbook. And that was really helpful. We did go uh, revisit our playbook and adopted a lot of uh, very innovative ideas uh, from your playbook. And uh, so if there's someone who's looking for uh, some resources, they don't know where to start, uh, Jack, your book on playbook, the sales playbook is really a great book. And now I want to get into a little bit on into hiring salespeople because that's another struggle. So now MSP owner, they have created this playbook, they have tested the playbook, they know it works. Now they want to hire right salespeople to build a sales team to expand their capabilities beyond them. So what you always talk about recruitment list and a process behind that. Can you talk to us, what is that recruitment list and how does it help in terms of hiring effective, successful salespeople? Yeah, so so I've run into so many entrepreneurs and business owners that tell me, I'm looking for a great salesperson. Ah, gosh, I have such difficulty finding a good salesperson. And I turn to them and say, well, you know, show me the list and maybe I can help. And there's this giant pause and it's like, uh, what list? Well, the list of people that you're currently going after. Because you see, if you don't have a list, you're not really recruiting. What you're really doing is wishful thinking. Maybe when I go into the company today, uh, one or two top producers will be out there in the parking lot saying, are you hiring, which is not a good process. So I say it this way, recruiting is a process and not an event. And you always, always, always are recruiting. And the key is to have a list of people that meet what I call the profile of what makes a good salesperson. And that's not a job description. That's the attributes of what makes a really good salesperson. And, you know, this is a really big point that I will convey to the MSPs today. Um, You you guys uh, and guys as male or female, you guys get all hung, hung up on do they have industry experience? I would prefer that someone has industry experience. But quite frankly, I can teach them enough of the industry experience if they've got the selling skills. So what you're looking for is, do do they have selling skills? Uh, Have they demonstrated success at the selling skills? Uh, Do they have a work ethic? Are they money hungry? Uh, You know, are they attitudinally correct? So I'm looking for people that get up and are self-motivated, not, you know, how do you motivate salespeople? You you don't have to ever worry, Sonny, about motivating me. I came running out of my mother's womb motivated. Um, (laughs) Just put me in a great environment and cut me loose to do my thing, right? So all we need to do is get a list of maybe eight or 10 people that have my profile. And if you write down the bullet points, one pager, here's the profile of what I'm looking for, then take that profile and network. Give it to people that you know, everybody you run into. I'm looking for people that look like this. It would be great if they came from the technology business, but I can teach them enough of that. Here, do you know anybody that's your neighbor, that's a family member, that's a friend, that's somebody you play sports with? And you just give it out all over the place and and candidates surface. Absolutely. Yeah. And what are like what are some strategies? I'm I'm now thinking of a recruitment list, and that can be used not only for salespeople, but other uh, critical roles that uh, you have in the company, right? So I'm thinking, how can I cre- build that list? Where do I go to find those people that are meeting uh, the criteria or the profile? Do you have any suggestions in terms of strategies that work in terms of building that list? Yeah, so I, I, I again, I, I am always on the lookout for top 
people that would meet the profile. I, I am agnostic as the industry. I don't really care. Right. So like I'll give you an example. My wife and I years ago were at a restaurant here in Southern California where we live and the waitress was amazing. And I just kept getting into conversation with her every time she'd come by the table and wanted to know what her aspirations were and whether she was going to school and all of these types of things. And uh, and eventually, eventually, I gave her my business card and said, look, I'm not hitting on you. This is my wife here. Uh, but I'm building a company that a person like you, we could we could teach the business and you would make. 10 times what you're making doing this waitress job. And if you have any interest, get contact me. And uh, and, and I'm not going to ask you for your contact information. I'm going to get you to make the first initiative and uh, and so that you know that I'm not a stalker, et cetera. Well, uh, she contacted me and she came to work for me. And in her first year, she made six figures uh, doing what we were doing and stayed in that industry for the rest of her career as best that I know it. But here's the, here's the message. I'm, I'm always looking. I had, I had a, 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 a bullet point profile in my jacket. I pulled it out and said, this looks like you, my contact information is on it. And basically everywhere I go, I'm giving it out to people. So when people render me good service in, let's say that I go to a Best Buy store and I'm looking in the electronics area um, and I get, I, I, and I get to somebody that approaches me that is just a terrific salesperson. Well, that's a candidate. And, and they're and they're close enough to the industry that I'm not going to have to make a giant leap in training them. And so um, where where are these people at? You know, uh, and, and so so there's two messages I'm giving, Sonny. One is I'm directly and always looking. Mm -hmm. And the second is that I have that written profile and I'm giving it out to, to friends and saying, look for me. Go go and list other people to help you recruit. Yeah, and no, that's a great example uh, because you know Ketan, uh, he's our global service delivery manager. Uh, uh, we found him from Apple Store and uh, it was right next to our office. And, uh, you know, I used to go there quite often and he came to the interview. He wanted to get into the corporate world from the retail uh, store, but he was selling Apple products there. He was well-trained on customer delight. He was well-trained on how the process works. And so he started working with us to sell hardware software to our business customers because that's one of our service to these small businesses as MSP. And that's where he started. Then he moved into kind of building more proposals for us. And then he moved in, he wanted to go into technology and he traveled his journey with IT by design in the last now decade that he's with us. And that's a success story that I can relate to when you said, you know, you have to just look around Best Buy to everything else that you kind of uh, get in, you know, restaurants. And uh, it's not only LinkedIn, but you can look around and wherever you are. And if you are, if, uh, you know, you're interacting with people and you find a match, uh, it's, it's, it's a good thing to just be intentional about, about hiring all the time. Now, Jack, one question that I always uh, kind of ask people around me, uh, other entrepreneurs around me and, and uh, my peers, they, they have normally the same question in our peer group, peer group discussions. What good looks like for a successful salesperson? I'm sorry, ask it again. Uh, so uh, in terms of a salesperson, uh, what are the attributes of a successful salesperson? Like when you hire from your kind of experience, what, what is common to see in salespeople that you should keep an eye on or when you are talking to people, you're like, okay, if this person, you mentioned grit, and is there anything else uh, that you look for in salespeople when you're hiring uh, for your sales team? So, uh, uh, you know, Every every company should have its profile that is based on who has been successful in that environment. 
uh, previously and what did that profile look like? Now with a lot of MSPs, the principal or the owner hasn't brought somebody on or they haven't had success, so that's more difficult. So let's give them a little bit of that makings. I, I'm look. I, I'm looking for. I'm looking for a salesperson that's money hungry. I, I want somebody that sees opportunity. Like the more that I'm successful, the more financially I will do well here. Um, so that's one. A second is that they're a self starter. That that they're that they come in early. That they stay late. That they're not look, look, waiting for somebody to kind of uh, move them into getting with it, um, that they're organized, uh, that, that they have a discipline, they have a rigor, uh, they, they have a process that they follow, uh, that their day, their calendar looks like what you would envision a doctor's calendar look like. Um, they've got a, a, a seven o'clock appointment, they have a 715 appointment, they have a 745 appointment, they have an 830 appointment, and it's all block and chock-a-block, 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 chock-a-block. Um, I'm looking for that person. But the thing that I, you know, I mentioned grit, but I'm telling you, I, I, I love, I love the hunt. I love the hunt. I, I, the kill is, is anticlimactic to some degree. In other words, you know, when the, when the client says, I, I'm going to sign up with you, I want to, I want you to handle my business. Um, that's, that's cool. But as soon as that's over, I'm, I'm salivating. I want to go get another one. Uh, let, let, let's go. And, 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 and if, and, and Sonny, if you were to tell me, uh, well, don't even bother going over there because we've never had success over there that you, you've already lit me up because I, I'm thinking, ah, come on, let me, let me take a shot at that. You know, at 58 years old, I did not know how to swim. And from 58 uh, to 66 years old, I did 15 full Ironmans. And people looked at me when I was 58 saying, I'm going to do an Ironman, saying I'm too old. And I'm like, not only am I too old, hey, I don't know how to swim. And it starts with a 2.4 mile deep water swim on the clock. And yet I was able to do that. Why? Because my mental state is, man, they think it's impossible. Wait till they see me when I get this thing done. And so I'm looking for that ingredient. So when you're interviewing people, what you want to do is you want to ask them for examples of things like that in their history. And even if they go back to high school days, it's still applicable because patterns of success tend to repeat themselves throughout one's life. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, optimism and having that discipline uh, behind that optimism is really important for anything to you know, for us to be successful at anything. So, Jack, well, so, uh, sorry, let, let me let me let me interject here. It, it, look, we all we all start with the same number of hours every week. It's called one sixty eight. But then you've got to sleep and eat and exercise, do all these things. So you only have about forty to sixty hours to engage in business, generally speaking. Well, you better be darn sure that your head is on right attitudinally and that you're following successful processes in order to be successful. And so that time management, that rigor, that discipline, that's really what it is. It's all about the proper focus, you know, not being distracted by things. We're in the we're in the deep into the pandemic here. And I watch all of this idle chatter going all around me about, you know, talking about the vaccine and talking about the deaths and talking about this and talking about that and being locked down. And none of that is going to win you a client. Yeah. None of that is going to get you through the gatekeeper. I'd rather my competitors all be talking about those things while I'm out there banging on doors and making stuff happen, asking the questions and then finding the need and finding the pain and solving the pain. MSPs have got a great opportunity because as a previous business owner, many, many times with zero capability on the technology side, I'm telling you, if someone were able to give me a convincing story that they will take care of that piece of my world so that I can focus on my sales side of the world, nirvana. I mean, it's easy. Yeah, no, you always talk about 168, uh, 168 uh, as a number and your controllable list. 
And before, you know, while we were uh, on this uh, call today, uh, before uh, we started this, and you were talking about, you know, you always share your monthly uh, accomplishments, and it's uh, amazing to see what you have, what you do every single month, especially when you did not know how to swim at 58, and numbers that you were stats that you were sharing in terms of, uh, you know, your swimming and your uh, jogging and everything else. I want to take this opportunity, uh, Jack, and can you share those numbers with us? I know you will be sharing. I want to share with my viewers as well that it takes so much discipline and so much being intentional about your health and your controllable list. And that is what it takes for a leader to really lead the right way, lead their life journey the right way. So can you share those numbers? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to do better than that. Um, uh, it, we're sitting here on the 1st of February in 2021. And so the month of January just concluded. But uh, also the year 2020 just finished. And, you know, we went into lockdown in March. And uh, I, you could go to my website at jackdailysales.com and daily is D-A-L-Y. So jackdailysales.com, I actually post on there my goals for the next year, but I post on there everything that I got finished and accomplished in 2020. And people look at it and they're just mind blown about it. So let's just do January and do a couple highlights, just what took place in the last 30 days. Uh, I, 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 physical fitness is a very big thing for me. Uh, I worked out 31 days out of the 31 days in January. So I didn't miss a single day. I logged 530,000 steps. I did 7,900 sit-ups. I had 52 rides on my Peloton bike. And within those 52 set 17 personal records for 287 miles. I ran 121 miles. I rode 15 hours. I swam 7,900 yards. I exercised a total of 60 hours during January, which is basically two hours a day. My resting heart rate averaged 51. I had 15 speaking gigs, uh, most of them virtually. I averaged eight hours a day of sleep. I uh, read 17 books. I watched seven movies and I played six rounds of golf. We're all given the same amount of time every week, 168 times four weeks and all of that got done. That's called discipline, that's called focus. And can you imagine, Sonny, how I apply that to my business life as well? I do CEO coaching all over the world. I do presentations, I do training, and then I have a personal life that I live, and then I take care of myself physically so that I am top of game in all the dimensions of life. And yet we're all given the same number of hours. So if I had a if I were a candidate sitting in front of an MSP and you got that story out of me. You could go to sleep at night comfortable that this guy's going to come in and he's going to bang it. He is really going to go after it. And, you know, the fact that I can't speak the technology speak, I, that doesn't intimidate me because when I get in front of a prospect, uh, I'm going to dial you up and just say, get on over here or let's talk about it over the phone. We'll do FaceTime. We'll do a Zoom call or whatever we need to do. But I've got the talent back at the shop. I don't need to be the talent talking all of the bits and bites. Yeah, and that's a great message. Uh, the self-leadership, having that grit, having that discipline and focusing on the right thing can really, I mean, that's the key, right? That's the secret sauce. And I used to think where this all this energy comes from when I talked to Jack. And this is, this is the secret sauce. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And uh, I'm, I'm so grateful that you joined me today. Thank you so much, Jack. A lot of uh, valuable insights. And uh, I hope our viewers, my MSP friends, my peers, they can get something, at least something out of it. If there's one thing that, they, that, that I'm taking away from this session is having that self-leadership, self-discipline, focusing on the right thing. And sometimes we do have those uh, 
kind of reasons uh, you can call it that, okay, I don't have time to create a sales playbook or I don't have time to have my recruiter recru uh, recruitment list or my potential candidates list. But when you have the focus, you know where you're going and you have the discipline behind your journey and you focus on the right thing, you will find time to create your playbooks, to create those recruitment lists and be intentional about hiring and hiring all the time, no matter where you are, you're in the restaurant, you're at Apple, you're at Best Buy, wherever you are, you will always come across some good people where they meet your criteria. All you have to do is be intentional about building your team, building your process, and that is the key to building a very successful sales engine. So thank you Sonny, so much. Sonny, let me let me let me add one thing here uh, because I think it puts a wrap around the whole discussion we had, sure. uh, particularly with MSPs. Uh, I am a student of leaders, and I visited all of the presidential libraries in the United States. And this goes back to Eisenhower, uh, and he basically took a matrix. Uh, on how he was going to spend his time. And it was the urgent versus in, the important, mm -hmm. right? And so what I have discovered is people and companies tend to underperform to their capabilities because we rush to the urgent mm -hmm. at the expense of the important. Mm -hmm. See, um, in my mind, if you want to talk about the playbook, um, man, I've got this, I've got to get this, I got to get that. And I, I, I all these urgencies, and we, we push off the playbook because it's important, but it's not urgent. Like I've, I've been in business for three years. I've never had one. So to, to, to wait another month and to wait another month, and we end up waiting forever. And what I'm telling everybody here is um, it doesn't take that long. And it isn't that hard, but what you will see is a significant, significant leap up in terms of your productivity of your organization in the sales side, which is which is what it's all about. Yeah, no, that's great point, uh, great advice. Thank you so much, Jack. Thank you so much for joining me today and our viewers. Uh, thank you for taking the time to stay connected uh, with my podcast. We appreciate it. and. Everyone have a great day.